Rigid power duels are dead. It's over. That's what everybody thought, including me. But then they revived themselves. But before we get to that, we gotta discuss how this all started. It all started for Rigid in 1923 in Ridgeville, Ohio, and they made their first product, which was a pipe wrench. And they continued that through the 1930s, making different hand tools for the mainly the plumbing trade. In 1943, they moved their headquarters to Elrio, Ohio, where it is today. In the late 1940s, they started adding electric tools like this electric threader to their lineup. And in 1959, they come up with this portable pipe threader, which looks very similar to the one I used when I started construction in 1995. In 1966, Emerson Electric bought or acquired rigid tools and they still own them today, even though TTI has some type of hand in this too, which we'll talk about later. 1997, Breakthrough year for Rigid, they launched the website, rigid.com. In the late 1990s and early 2000s, this is where I think Rigid was really in their stride. They had a ton of professional grade tools and they were one of the main tools you would see on a work site, or at least the work sites I was on. And in 2017, I come along. I purchased this set of drill and driver set. This is my first cordless power tool set that I ever bought. And the reason I went with Rigid was because of the lifetime service agreement. I looked at all the competition at the time and I just thought, man, having a lifetime guarantee on these batteries is a huge deal to me. and have a whole lot of money. And I didn't want to continually have to buy batteries if they would go bad. I was thinking they would go bad more often. They actually don't. But that's the main driver behind why I bought these. And they were very, very good tools. I built a ton of stuff with these two tools right here, the drill and the impact and they both still work today. And because I was already in their platform, I bought this router. Again, battery, platform, lifetime service agreement, and I actually had to use the lifetime service agreement on this very router. Took it to the repair shop, they fixed it free of charge after I've owned this for five years. Very few tool companies will fix a tool that's five years old after I have beat it to death, basically is what happened. And starting in 2018, 2019, 20, 21, 22, in that several year period there, this is when things started kind of going off the rails for Rigid in my opinion. They kind of lost their way. And a lot of people thought that they were dying. They were done for. Den of Tools has an amazing video on this from two years ago, right during this time when they everybody thought they were going away and they were done because there was no indication that Rigid was trying to do anything other than survive at that point. Now Rigid seemed to be the redheaded stepchild of the TTI brand because they own Milwaukee, Ryobi, Rigid, as well as Hart. Hart is a Walmart brand. Milwaukee seems to be the top of the line professional grade brand. Ryobi was almost the budget brand, but also the house brand of Home Depot. They were everywhere. Anytime you walk into Home Depot, there's just displays after displays of Ryobi tools. And Rigid just had a little small section there. And the Rigid tool selection in store at Home Depot was very limited from 2020 to 2022. During this early, I think it was like 2019, 2020-ish, they introduced the Octane line. I bought an Octane line tool and this flopped massively. They've actually killed off this Octane line. It's not even around anymore. Uh, even, I think they had some batteries, Octane labeled batteries that are no longer available. It was just a flop. They just, I don't know, they didn't have the right marketing. They didn't have the right push. Something just wasn't clicking on all cylinders with Rigid. And then you start thinking about where does Rigid fall in the line of tools because you've got DeWalt, Milwaukee, uh, Ryobi, like there's so many different ones. If you just think about Home Depot, you got Ryobi and Milwaukee and then also Rigid, even at TTI. Like how do they fall in there? Because Ryobi started out as the uh, budget brand, but now they're kind of prosumer level. They're getting on up there with the quality of their tools, especially on the brushless line of tools. And they have such a massive selection of tools. And then Milwaukee's up here on a tier on their own as far as in the minds of most people as far as pro level tools. And then you have Rigid, which was used to be the kind of the middle ground where the DIY prosumer level people would pick these up. And really the only thing that I think was separating them during this time was that lifetime service agreement. But that wasn't enough to sell people on their tools. They were also not releasing any new tools. They dipped their toes into the subcompact line. And in the subcompact line, they had too much competition to really compete there with, unless they'd done something drastic. You got the DeWalt Atomic line, Milwaukee M12, Makita has a subcompact line. So what, what was Rigid doing there? They're, they couldn't find their way. They seemed to be lost. They released a couple of very okay outdoor equipment when everybody else was really expanding the outdoor equipment, one of the fastest growing segments of the cordless tools. And Rigid just seemed to be kind of resting on their laurels. I thought, you know, <laughs> I'm a Rigid guy. I bought into this stuff and I kind of made a mistake because now they're going away. 
Now there's no new tools coming. I thought I just probably need to get a different battery platform. And so I did. I bought some Milwaukee M12 stuff. I bought some DeWalt stuff. And because there just wasn't anything new coming from Rigid. And I wasn't the only one that felt this way. There were posts all over the internet asking if the Rigid was going away, if they were dying, and you know, what was going on with Rigid because nothing new was happening. It was kind of a dark time for us Rigid folks. But just like in the 1990s, when you were watching WWF, that's what it was back then. You had Hulk Hogan. He was down and out. Everybody thought he was beat. And then he hulked up and he come back and he started punching people in the face that were hating on him. So this is kind of what I think about. I don't know why I thought about that. This is what I thought when I was thinking about the rigid line in 2023. Because in 2023, they showed up and showed out with these new tools. Check this out. So 2023 was amazing. They kept coming out with new tools. And first of all, I got my hands on the rigid track saw. Now this track saw compares extremely well with a lot of the competition out there. I was extremely impressed with the build quality of this tool, the way the height adjustment works, the way the bevel adjustment works. There is zero deflection in this track saw and it is a very powerful track saw for the price. And now they've come out with even more accessories for this. At the time, there was two tracks you had to put together to get them long enough to make a cross cut on a piece of plywood. Now they have the 60 inch track available and this thing is available at Home Depot and you can just pick it up. This is fantastic. This is one of the best, almost, it's not even, I, I hesitate to call it a budget level because that makes you think that it's a cheaper track saw. It is a very affordable track saw with a ton of great features. I have a full review on it. I'll link it in the card above. You can check that out or in the description. But this is one of the better track saws that I used this year. And I am very impressed with the overall quality and build of this track saw. But Rigid didn't st stop at the track saw. They didn't stop at all. They come out with two new jigsaws this year, a standard grip as well as a barrel grip. All of these are brushless line of tools. This barrel grip jigsaw quickly became my go-to jigsaw in the shop. I've never owned a barrel grip, but this one is awesome. It's just, it works extremely well. I've used it quite a bit here in the shop. It is variable speed. It has a lot of different adjustments here on the side that you would expect in a modern jigsaw. Dust collection works okay, not great, but this is a really good option if you're in the rigid tool line. The standard jigsaw is also fantastic. It just depends on what grip you want, what kind of cutting you're doing with these. I've enjoyed having this one as well, but if I'm reaching for one, I'm reaching for the barrel grip. They also come out with multiple different versions of ratchets as well as an impact. This is a 90 degree impact subcompact. Again, they're still in the subcompact line, still dipping their toes there. It's not a bad thing. Not a bad thing at all. I'm glad they're still trying to, that line of tools. This is a 90 degree impact. Great for getting into tight spots and it just works extremely well. They also come out with several different ratchets for mechanics and different things like that. So they're really trying to expand their user base in my opinion. I had this router since 2017. It's been fantastic. It went up in smoke. They fixed it. It's amazing. They come out with a new one. Just a new version of the old one. Still variable speed. Still has plenty of power. Still is very nice to hold in hand. This is probably right behind Milwaukee, in my opinion, on uh, comfort in the hand and usability. I use this one in the shop all the time. If you're familiar with the Milwaukee, it, the depth adjustment works very similarly. Uh, this is a really good, powerful, variable speed router. I like that they fixed the switch on here. The switch on the old version is on the side. And it's a push through and it's okay. It's a push pull basically. And a lot of times when you're routing, my thumb would hit that, knock it off. I like this one. This is more of a toggle switch style and the variable speed is on the left where the old power switch was. So I think they've really made some nice upgrades with this router. This is the rigid 18 gauge Brad Nailer. I've had this since 2017 or 2018. I've used this more than I can count. Now they have the rigid 23 gauge pin nailer, which come out this year. This is also very small, very lightweight. This is extremely handy to have if you tack in on trim or anything like that. You just need to pop something on there until the glue dries. That's where I use this the most. I think a pin nailer is one of those must have woodworking tools that a lot of woodworkers don't really think about. Rigid come out with a new version of this 18 gauge brad nailer. Uh, that's a little lighter, a little more compact, uh, just overall good upgrade, I think. And then they also come out with some impacts and other tools that some people may be interested in that are not woodworkers. One thing I think that 
gives us promise that Rigid's going to be around a while and they're going to continue to innovate is the fact that you saw new, very nice outdoor power tools because that's one of the fastest expanding tool lines on any cordless brand. Ryobi has them, Milwaukee, DeWalt, everybody seems to have outdoor power equipment and Rigid had some pretty crappy stuff, if we're being honest, before this year. Now they have the new leaf blower, which I have here, and I've used it quite a bit, especially for just blowing dust out of the shop. But it's also very powerful and the batteries last a long time. And speaking of batteries, they also come out with a nice, beefy 12 amp hour battery so that you could use it on those power tools to get that battery life you need. They also come out with the 18 volt auger, an 18 volt chemical sprayer, 18 volt hedge trimmer, pruners, string trimmer, and a chainsaw. That gives us a lot of clues that they are not going away, that they are all in on this platform, and we've got a whole lot of hope moving forward. I'm very excited to see what Rigid's going to do in 2024 if this is what we got in 2023. Now, if they sat back and just kind of ride the wave of 2023, then I'll be concerned. But if 2024, they keep putting out these new tools like this, I think we got a lot to look forward to as a Rigid fan. Full disclosure, I purchased a lot of these tools myself starting in 2017 with my money, but some of these tools were sent to me in 2023 for review by Rigid. Overall, I'm happy to see that they're coming out with new tools. Hopefully, we'll see more in 2024. If you like this video, you'll love the Hater's Guide to Ryobi Tools that I did just a little while ago. Click that box right there and click in the box, get to the big old virtual fist bump. Also, another one of my favorites, if you don't like Ryobi, but you should check out Ryobi.